Hello, good morning. Once again, uh, thanks to God, it's a pleasure and an honor to stand here and speak this morning on the Word of God. It's truly a blessing to be here today. God has made this all possible by giving us life today, and I truly praise Him for uh, all the things that He do for me and others. God is good even in the midst of troubled times. God is still a good and awesome God. And today I want to call your attention to the Old Testament of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter number 6. And we're going to read verse 10 and look at a few of the following thereafter. Amen. And Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 10 reads like this. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Indeed, their ears is uncircumcised, and they cannot give heed. Behold, the word of the Lord is a reproach to them. They have no delight in it. Amen. I'm going to flip over, and I'm going to read verse number 16. And thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see. And ask for the old paths, when the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. Amen. I want to stop reading right there. And think with me on this matter today. Hearken to God's word. Oftentimes we hear God's word, it bounces into our ears and right out. But most times it's never received in our hearts. And when I think about hearken, it simply means to hear what is being said. And it is a verb. And certainly we know verb is an action word. For an example, if I tell you that the bridge is out and I warn you before you get to the water and you go on after I had given you warnings, then you plumb yourself over into the water, then you ignored the warning. So it was no different in the day of Jeremiah. He was a prophet called to prophesy to the nation of Israel. We know that in this particular writings, this was an independent destruction that was coming from the north. And all they had to do was turn their hearts back to God, repent, and God would have spared their nation. We know that Jerusalem was a beautiful city. A lot of flowers and different things and artifacts that made it a, a great city. But God won the people. If they didn't turn back to him, what would happen? We know the city would be destroyed. And why was the city going to be destroyed? Well, let me just give you a few examples. Well, number one, the leaders was oppressing the people. Their hearts was far from God. They was abusing their power. They oppressed the poor. And they had no reverence for life and violence. So all these things was going on in the nation. And God simply told the prophet, would you just prophesy to Jerusalem? I mean, the prophet seen the vision very clear. He realized that God had spoken to him. And he was doing what God had called him to do. And you know the story of Jeremiah when God called him to preach and prophesy to uh, his calling. 
He told God, I'm a child, I cannot speak. But God reminded him, say not what I can't do. Because we know that today we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. So Jeremiah seen this vision very clearly. So clear till he began to warn Jerusalem. Where his eyes was open, their eyes was closed. They could not see anything other than what was going on in their present day and time. It was business as usual. Reminds me of today, out of all the preaching, teaching, and prophets, sighing that's going on it reminds me it's business as usual well we who are of the light know that it's not business as usual we know these are strange times that we're living in most of us who have been on earth for quite a period of time know that this is something that they haven't witnessed before but it was only only to purge the vision so clearly, so plainly, that he looked into the future and peered into the future and, and told them what was going to happen. It was a dreadful reality that was going to come, and it was going to come at a fast pace if they didn't turn around. And as he began to prophesy to them, this is what the people replied to him. The people's ears was uncircumcised. And we know uncircumcised means that something needs to be cut away. Their ears was dull. They couldn't hear. And so, meaning that their lives, their lives was not devoted to God. For we know they did not change. And we know the results of them not changing. The citizens of Jerusalem was incapable of keeping the covenant that God had covenant with them. Furthermore, their rebellion had become so ingrained that the word of God had become a disgrace to them. And when the word of God no longer have an effect and it become disgrace to you, we're headed for trouble. And so the revelation of God's divine will no longer delighted them. They had lost their appetite for God. And you know when you lose your appetite for something, then we must regain it again. And they had lost their heart for the word of God. And God says, when you lose heart for my word and don't obey what I ask you to do, you're headed for big trouble. It reminds me of the writings in Judges in verse number 21 and uh, chapter number 21 and verse 25. It says like this. Says everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Does it sound like today? Everything that we can name possibly could be going on is going on in our society. We have taken prayer out of schools. We have separated state and church. For we have a slogan on our money says, in God we trust. But when they look at what's going on in our society today, it's far from that. Or should we say, in money we trust. Judges 17 and 6 says, and in those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what he thought was right in his own eyes. 
And see, when we have no boundaries, everyone do what they think was right in their own eyes. Without God, we are headed for trouble. And so in verse 6 and 16 reads, Speak to them, thus says the Lord. Stand in the way and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way is, and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. The prophet reminded them that God was a God who keep his covenant. He reminded them not to forget where God had brought them from. And he probably was referring to the covenant at Sinai, the covenant over in Deuteronomy. When God had made a covenant with Abram and the Jewish people, that he was on their side. Do you realize today that God is on our side? But there's some corrections that we need to do. If we repent and turn our hearts back to the God of heaven, I believe things will be all right. Remember, when God's word was a fire in your life, it reminds me of the prophet Jeremiah when he says, it was just like fire shut up in my bones. I just can't hold my peace. Is your fire burning today? Are you excited about the word of God? Are you sharing the word of God with those who have no hope? And he goes on and he says, I just can't hold my peace. So the word of God must be a fire in our life today. We must hearken unto his word because there we find life. The people refuse to walk rightly the rest of the way. They said, we don't want to hear what you have to say. They also refused to listen to the alarming sound that the trumpet and the prophet was blowing. A warning, if you don't repent and come back to me and give your life over to me, this is what's going to happen. They had scales over their eyes. They could not see. Their ears was uncircumcised. They could not hear. And they begin to deny the power and the danger that existed. Danger is all around. And today we still turn a deaf ear to God's word. So they refuse, refuse to uh, listen to God's word. The nations and the earth who are called to witness became dull in their calling. And we find over in the book of Mecca, chapter number one, verse two, and it reads like this, hear, God is calling us in this hour to hear what he's saying in this time. All you people, hearken, O earth, and all that within. And let the Lord God be a witness to us against you from his holy temple. God is speaking in this hour. Let not our ears become dull of hearing, but let us become hearers and also doers of what the word of God is saying. So we know that Jerusalem went into captivity because their hearts was hardened. Today I pray that our hearts is not hardened, that we are hearing the word of God today plainly 
what he's saying in this hour. He says, my word, get back to my word. He also says, my laws, the relation of God's word with the people was rejected time and time and time again. Regardless of the prophets warning them, they continued to do what they thought was right in their own eyes. God has prepared a word for us. And when the word comes to us, let us receive it in our hearts. And let me remind you today, when the word of God is rejected over and over again, we know that the outcome is pain and most time grief. Oh yeah, yeah, they had prepared the city against the coming, uh, oncoming enemy. But they didn't know that God had laid a stumbling block in their path because they wouldn't return their hearts back to God. We talked about the pain and the grief. We know that today we are in a pandemic, COVID-19. It's caused a lot of pain and a lot of grief in a lot of families' lives. A lot of people have been affected by it. A lot of jobs have been lost, a lot of chaos in our country and around the world. The people of that day, hearts was hardened, and they became prisoners in their own city. It reminds me today when we were all sheltered in, when you could only go out to the grocery store, to the pharmacy, or to the emergency room, it reminded me that we were almost like, not prisoners, but it was a way of life that we wasn't accustomed to being in. And so we know that they fell into captivity and became prisoners in their own city. So in my closing today, I just want to encourage you, stay close to God. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He is the center of our joy. It is in him we have our beings and we move. If you don't have peace today in your life, if peace is a problem, talk to Jesus. Spend time in his word that you might find rest and peace for your souls. For the word reminds us of God's goodness, that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Even though trouble on every hand, God is still merciful today. Why, you can, why I can say that is when I look around and behold the glory of the Lord, I behold his green trees, his grass. I behold how the night become, and then the day that he allows to live to see another day, the daylight. And everything that God has made for his glory, he's still a good God. So we know he never leaves us nor forsake us. So I just want to encourage you today. Hearken unto his word. Hear that voice that's speaking to you today. Whatever it is God is saying in your life, make it a priority to spend time in his word so that when trouble come into your camp, you have some protection and some to battle with. Don't be like Israel and the city of Jerusalem. Say, we would not listen. We will not walk in that way. We want to do our own thing. So be blessed. Be encouraged. God is able to keep you.
from falling. And I close with this. Even in the midst of trouble, when it seemed like the tides of life have overtaken you, God says, turn back to my word. Spend time in prayer, seeking his face, turning from our evil ways. Repent before the God of heaven that he will give us rest for our souls. Amen.